I won't ask you about uh, Vander Kane on the power play, but uh, <laughs> no, uh, with all seriousness, just it appears as though Dylan Holloway has made the team. Uh, I think we'll have full clarity at three. Maybe just a thought on uh, his journey, your time with him in the minors, and, uh, and the opportunity that appears based on today's line combinations to be there for him because he's been a big story through the course of training camp. Yeah, a real positive narrative uh, that's kind of woven its way th starting in rookie camp all the way through main camp here. Uh, he's hit uh, some necessary steps along the way. Um, you know, we said this uh, last week, but I thought he was probably the best player in that Penticton tournament. He carried that personal momentum into his preseason. He's seen some tough lineups, and uh, I see someone getting better every day. And, um, you know, he's, he's worked hard to put himself in that position, so I'm happy for him. Uh, with Yamamoto on the ice today, do you expect him to be available for uh, opening night? Um, I thought it was a positive sign that he was on the ice with us today. Uh, he took part in all the drills and, and appeared to feel good, so I'll, I'll revisit that. Um, I haven't gone by the trainer's room to see where everybody's at or gotten the report yet, but I thought it was a positive sign. So if he's if he's not available, you've had Jesse on that line for a few days. Is it is it just a good sign that you've got other guys that have played top six roles before? Like one of those guys goes down, there's internal competition for those spots. Yeah, I think uh, anytime there's competition, it's uh, it's really positive because usually, in my experience, competition brings the the best in people. Uh, I thought Jesse Pugliarvi played a heck of a game uh, last game. I thought he was physical. I thought he got in on the forecheck. Um, you know, he found a way to score a goal, which I'm sure helps his own personal confidence. But I thought he did a lot of really good things in that game. And anytime you have a lot of people pushing, it makes your team better and, and uh, it makes it competitive for those ice time and specifically the privileged ice time. Uh, Jay, I know there's been a lot of talk about Jack Campbell coming in here, but Stuart Skinner might play 20, 25 games for you this year. More depending on what happens. I just want to ask you about his training camp and, and just his, the confidence level you guys have with him in that when he does have to come in and spell Jack. Yeah, I thought, um, you know, Stewart has come a long way since first drafted into our organization. He's hit a lot of developmental steps along the way. Um, I feel really comfortable with Stewart just because I've seen him take those steps. Uh, I've, you know, it at the American League level, won, won a lot of games with Stuart Skinner in the net, our team did. And uh, so I feel comfortable. And then last year, uh, when Dave Manson and I first came up, I thought it was, uh, you know, I think it was our second game up that Stuart Skinner tossed a shutout in San Jose. So I've seen him at this level. I've seen him at the American League level. I've seen a young man mature. Uh, and hit the necessary steps along the way. So I, I feel quite confident in him as I do Jack Campbell. And just that relationship with your goalies, like I, I talked to Stuart, he said they just met Jack this year. Um, your friends, you, your, your teammates, you want to succeed, but you're also competing for playing time. I guess that's an interesting dynamic. Yeah, kind of goes to Ryan's question too, uh, which is competition typically brings the best out in, in people. And if you know that there is a capable person uh, there that can do that job, I think it, it, you know, the rising tide floats everybody's boat in that situation. And... Uh, yeah, so I think it is a unique relationship. They're gr they're both great people, great teammates. They're cheer for each other, but when they get the net, they don't want to give it up. And that's, uh, in the end, the benefactor is the Edmonton Oilers when that happens. Thanks, Jay. Yeah. Hi, Jay. Just over here. Hi, happy, happy Thanksgiving. Um, happy Thanksgiving to you as well. Thank you. A couple of more questions on Dylan Holloway. Uh, I know when he had his wrist injury, he couldn't really do much with the stick, so he really focused on his skating. And even today, we see him after practice doing drills with Pelletier on his edge work and everything relative to skating. How much improvement have you seen in that aspect from him? Yeah, I think he's a really, really powerful skater. Like, a very powerful skater. Um, I think that helps him play a power forward type of game. Just the way he's low to the ground, he, he's, he's willing to do things with his skating. And I think this is an important point. He's willing to do things that are hard 
So he'll take a D-man wide, which isn't always the easiest thing uh, to do. He'll bring the puck all the way across the blue paint rather than just kind of tiptoeing to the near post. He does hard things with that skating. I think that's one of his main assets as a player. Is certainly his hands are feeling a lot better, and I think that's just time taking its course, uh, and a lot of the work that he put in to rehab that. But he should feel very confident right now. He's put a lot of work in, and I'm happy for him. When talking to his teammates, specifically McDavid and Drysaddle, the first thing they mention about Holloway is his hockey IQ. When he's able to kind of transition uh, throughout preseason now coming into Wednesday playing with some of the top guys and making it almost look seamless how much of a testament is that of his hockey IQ yeah I think uh, when players of uh, Leon Dreisaitl and, and Zach Hyman are talking about your IQ that's a feather in your cap um, you know and they're demonstrating that they feel good with him on on their line um, you know uh, Leon thinks a game at an otherworldly level he just does compared to most established NHL hockey players. Uh, and so when he's commenting on, on Holloway's hockey IQ, I think, as I said, that's a real compliment. Jay, do you have a, an update on Philip Broberg? Because he wasn't on the, the ice today. Yeah, you know what? Uh, we held some people off. There's going to be some roster maneuvering here. Uh, obviously, we got to turn in our, our roster. I think it's, is it 3 o'clock? Three o'clock? Today, our time, 5 o'clock Eastern. So in the interest of the roster maneuvering, he was held off today. Sure. Um, James Hamlin is a guy that like came from next to nowhere a couple of years ago, and I know he's somebody that you speak pretty highly of. What, what maybe the best skill that he brings? Um, yeah, I think hockey sense. Exactly what Tony was talking about with Dylan Holloway. I think James is a, you know, he's a diligent worker. He's somebody... Um, who is positionally very sound, but uh, to be able to play at this level, um, at his size, requires a level of hockey sense. I think Kyler Yamamoto has great hockey sense, and he's able to play at this level at that size as well. Um, for I can go back a few years uh, with James, but James, when he first uh, got to the American League, was... Um, Somebody I just kept seeing in the in the good video all the time, uh, in in a very limited role at the start, and then progressively he was trusted more and more, and he just kept finding him in the right spots. And you know, I was happy for him. He's put in a really good training camp here. I know he's played a little bit at center here in the preseason. I yeah. think he's played a bit more on the wing, but I could be wrong. But that versatility is probably valuable. We're pretty deep down the middle, D N D. Where, where do you, like one day if he's able to to be a full time NHLer, where do you see him playing, or is it a matter of the fact that he can play all the position? Yeah, I think part of his his um, you know attributes as a player is, is his versatility as well. You know, I, I said hockey sense is number one attribute, but versatility, I, I feel good. I could put him anywhere up front. Um, I think people, this is my opinion, it's, it's not uh, gospel or anything like that, but I think centers typically have the ability to play on either wing. Uh, and make it work. You're seeing that with Ryan McLeod a little bit. Nuge has done that in the past. Certainly when Connor and Leon play together, one of them has to play on the wing. So I think it's a little easier for centers to do that. Um, and, you know, to be able to do that, you have to, level, you have, to have a level of conscientiousness about you um, to be able to understand all those different positions. Good. Thanks, guys.